Today we're going to jump into the world of gem treatments. Now, the whole idea of gems being treated sometimes makes people feel a little bit uneasy, especially in today's world where this illusion of everything being as natural as possible or in its original state seems to kind of be as prevalent, more prevalent than ever. However, one common example that's often used and can kind of help put things into perspective is the idea of a beautiful wood table. The craftsmen put in all this effort to take that, you know, originally very rough looking piece of wood and he shapes it and sands it. He probably even fills in some areas and then he tops it with several layers of stain and lacquer and all of this is just to bring out the true beauty of what was originally a very rough looking piece of wood. So when we think of it like this, treatments are generally just trying to bring out the true beauty of a gemstone and truly make it shine and make it worth being set in a gorgeous piece of jewelry that you're gonna treasure for a lifetime. It's also interesting that gem treatments, including oils and dyes, have been used for centuries and they've been mentioned in texts as early as 200 BC, which is quite amazing. Now, it's important to mention that all gem treatments, regardless of whether they're even detectable or even just suspected, have to be disclosed whether you're buying a gemstone or a finished piece of jewelry. And this can be a bit of a gray area in the market, but it is important that gem treatments are always disclosed. And that way, as a customer, you know exactly what you're getting and you can make the educated decision of what value factors really mean the most to you. Now, there are some gem treatments that you should be especially wary of and maybe even want to avoid, but I'm gonna mention those a little bit later and we'll get into it likely in part two of this video series. Now, the most common way to improve the color and sometimes even the clarity of gems is heat treatment. And this is the most common treatment by far and it's estimated that over 90% of gemstones on the market today are heat treated. Now, to get a little technical, the way heat treatment actually works is by causing a chemical reaction within the gem, either by making the trace elements within the gemstone either lose or gain electrons. And this affects the way that the gem reacts with light and therefore how we see its color. Now, when it comes to two of the most common gems on the market, sapphires and rubies, which are both part of the corundum species, heat treatment is even more common and the percentage is even higher, maybe even closer to 90 95% of gems on the market are estimated to be heat treated. Now with rubies, the heat treatment is usually working to take away some of the purplish color in a purplish red sapphire and that's gonna make it more of that true red, more highly valued color when it comes to ruby. When it comes to sapphires, it can take a lighter toned, even grayish toned stone and turn it into a more saturated true blue gem. Again, keep in mind with these two gems, which are very common, anything you're generally gonna find in the mass market. So, uh, you know, like a jewelry store that you might find at the mall or anything else that's really reaching a large group of people, something even like Brilliant Earth or websites of that nature. These are gonna be treated gems. You know, that's a good generalization that you can make. And of course they should be disclosing that. Um, but if you are looking for a sapphire or a ruby that's very high quality and untreated, that's definitely generally gonna be in the description. It's gonna be called unheated because it is quite rare to have an unheated stone. And at this point, it's gonna add a lot to its value. When it comes to other varieties, such as tanzanite, for example, they're pretty much all treated because the original species, which is called zoocyte, <clears throat> is actually a brown gem and it does require heat, whether that's you know from the sun in its natural environment or for the most part in a post mining process that does heat it to give it that true trademark purplish uh, blue beautiful color. Other gemstones that are very commonly heat treated include morganite, aquamarine, blue topaz, and amber. Tourmaline, especially blue and green varieties, are sometimes heat treated as well as quartz, which is citrine and amethyst, but it's definitely not as common as some of those other stones. The great thing about heat treatment is that it's generally a very stable and permanent effect. And interestingly, it can vary quite a bit. So it could be something quite as archaic as holding a gem over an open flame until the desired effect is achieved, or it can be something much more ex extreme in the industry, such as using uh, very high tech computerized furnaces so that very extreme temperatures can be reached and controlled a lot more carefully. 
Now the tricky thing about this is that the gems that require very low heat treatment are basically indistinguishable from gems that haven't been treated at all. And you can kind of look at this as a good thing, but if it's something that you are feeling, you know, very interested in and specific that you want an untreated gem, it's definitely gonna be something that you have to send to a gemological laboratory uh, to make sure that it hasn't been treated in any way. Lastly, heat treatment can also be used to create phenomenal effects, including asterism and corundum, which of course would lead to a star ruby or star sapphire. Lattice diffusion is a slightly more controversial treatment, and it's something we're definitely gonna see in general more in gems that are, again, at that mar mass market level or below. It's most often used to create nicer pink, blue, and even pad parajka colors within sapphire. Lattice diffusion actually combines very high temperatures, uh, over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, with gems that are in the environment with other chemicals and most often used is beryllium. And essentially that very high temperature allows the beryllium to penetrate the gem at surface level. And again, it creates a chemical reaction that in greatly improves generally the color of the gem. Now, as mentioned, because the color is really only getting to the surface of the gem, this can create quite a few issues for you. For example, if the gemstone ever gets chipped or it has to be repolished for any other reason, or you know, it does get damaged in any other way because if it gets recut in any way, you're gonna definitely see the different color in that gem. And that ideal either pink or blue color is really gonna only be on the perimeter or the outside of the gemstone. Again, very generally, we're seeing this in a little bit lower quality jewelry, but if you are in the market, especially for a blue sapphire, definitely gonna wanna keep this in mind. Um, and it, you really see the difference when, for example, you look at that gemstone in diffused lighting with a microscope, that's what you're gonna need to see it. And for example, the color concentration is very much only within the facet junctions of the gemstone. It almost looks like it has a spider web, so it's kind of interesting in that way. Of course, if the treatment is being disclosed to you and you love the color of the gem and you don't mind the fact that it's been treated in this way, you can get a great price on a gemstone like this. And if, of course, you avoid the wear and tear on the gem, you can end up with something that's really, really beautiful and the price is right, it could be a great option for you. Oiling gemstones is of course a centuries old clarity treatment that is most often and most famously used with emeralds. This is because emeralds are of course pretty famous for not having as high of clarity in general as other gems. The way that they form in the environment and the way that they're mined, they generally end up with a lot more inclusions than other gems. And so the oiling treatment really helps to kind of give them a, the illusion of a little bit better clarity. And the way this works is oils, often something like a cedarwood oil and sometimes a resin or a synthetic resin are used and these materials are used because they have the same refractive index as the emerald itself. And this essentially means it's gonna reflect light in exactly the same way so that when you look at the emerald with the oil in it, it's going to kind of help those cracks and little lines really disappear because your eye is seeing the light reflection very evenly and very balanced. Now, if you're in the market for an emerald with all color gems, it's important to know that color is the most important value factor. So that's the first thing you're gonna wanna look for um, in the emerald, that the hue is exactly what you are you know, wanting. Secondly, the clarity and whether the emerald has been oiled or not is what's going to significantly affect the final price. Now, if you look at the emerald and it's, you know, has that beautiful kind of cluster crystal clear transparency, this is very rare and it's likely has very little to no oil and it's going to uh, reflect that in the price for sure. This is a treatment that's also generally very stable. If for some reason you have emerald jewelry that's been stored incorrectly in a very hot or very dry environment, uh, this can sometimes cause the oil to run out, but they can always be retreated. Um, and oiled again. And of course, you're gonna wanna source a professional who can do this correctly for you. Again, if you are in the market for emerald uh, jewelry and you really wanna know, you know what the oil treatment that has been used, the GIA can always um, evaluate emeralds and tell you exactly the level of oiling that has been involved. 
Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn more about gems and jewelry, be sure to visit us on our main page at winstongemsandjewelry.com. And be sure to watch out for part two of our gem treatment video, including some of the treatments that you should definitely avoid when shopping for jewels.